last summer I moved from London to this little cabin in the middle of a Swedish forest and I have been chronicling my renovations. It was a very cheap property and it needs a lot of work and I have been getting a lot of questions about why I moved to Sweden, how it's been being here on my own and how cold I've been <laughs> and my plans for the future so I thought I would take this video and try and answer some of those questions. I never actually had a lifelong dream of buying a cabin in the woods. The idea of moving to Sweden actually came about a year before I stepped foot in a country. And I don't even know Sweden really at all. It would have been a year before coming here. It was the first lockdown. I was in London and I'd been there for 17 years by then. I'd come to this point where I felt like I needed a really big change. I felt like my chapter in London was coming to an end. I decided to give myself a five-year plan. <laughs> in those five years I would figure out where I was going to live, what I was going to do for a living. But it only took about three months to <laughs> find out about cheap properties in Sweden. Most people will want to go to a country that's a lot more south to chase the warmth but I'm very much an introvert and being surrounded by exuberant <laughs> extroverted people actually just really doesn't suit my personality. One of the things that attracted me to Sweden was the fact that there's just so much space. The idea that I could just walk out of my house and be in nature really appealed to me. Let's go inside and make a coffee first. I can give you a little tour of the house as well. Oh, maybe later. Let's go around the back instead, which is the entrance I usually use. <laughs> dream was actually never to go and live in nature. I grew up in the Netherlands in a very small village. My dream was to go to New York. Ever since I was young I had this fascination with big cities and skyscrapers and I just loved the idea of a busy city and all of the people and being an anonymous person amongst them, observing and yeah, the excitement, the possibilities really had such an allure to me. That was my dream, to go to a big city. Unfortunately, New York was too expensive for me. So I ended up in London. creative and media writing and then I went on to study interior and spatial design where I learned how to design spaces and that's what I ended up doing for a job. I ended up working in the luxury industry designing hotels, restaurants, retail spaces and at that point my dream was really to have my own apartment and I really really wanted to buy something renovated but even after like 10 years of working my salary still wasn't high enough to get a mortgage that would get me anything so I decided to leave Are going 
going crazy and it's so amazing to hear them all coming out. But back to the story. Basically, I woke up one day and decided to go traveling. I took the money that I'd saved up for a down payment for an apartment and I went to East Asia. Traveling wasn't for me. I actually thought it was really stressful. I ended up meeting someone in Japan who was hiking around Hokkaido and I was immediately intrigued. During my travels I started to do a couple of hikes. I was hiking in South Korea and in Japan and then I met this person and everything changed. I exchanged all of my gear and I got hiking gear and I started doing long distance trails. And I guess I kind of entered a different stage <laughs> of my life to put it very dramatically. I hiked around the island of Tasmania first and then I hiked in Japan. I did a long distance trail in New Zealand. I hiked around Iceland and did the Pacific Crest Trail. At that point, I pretty much turned into a full-time hiker. I would hike for say six months out of the year and then I would come back to London and work and every time I'd come back I would get rid of more things and I just realized that I don't need all of this stuff anymore. If I was able to live on trail with just a backpack, why did I need these things? I had literally turned into the polar opposite of who I'd become been in a city. When I was hiking I started writing my blog and taking lots of pictures and people would always ask me if I was afraid to hike on my own and now that I'm alone in my cabin people still ask me the same things. I actually think it's a little bit sad that so many people are afraid. I feel like so many people's lives are defined by fear ingrained by society and the people around you as opposed to chasing your own dreams chasing happiness and the growth that you want to experience in this lifetime if you figure out what you want your life to be like whether it's a goal or whether it's a journey or just lessons you'll be able to deal with the fear. Although that doesn't mean that I was never afraid. Walking around Tasmania was my first long hike and I was terrified all the time. So before I went on my next big hike in Iceland, I actually took some self-defense glasses. I knew that taking a couple of glasses wasn't going to give me the, the physical attributes, all of the knowledge of how to defend myself, but it was more about my state of mind. That fear was so much worse than the actual possibility of anything happening. And next to that, I just learned how to be safe, how to make sure nobody sees me when I run off into the woods to set up my tents. And it's the same living in this little house in the woods. Oh, and if you stop watching true crime, you probably have a much more realistic sense of the fears that you should have about being out in the countryside. <laughs> and don't forget, there's many, many other people living here. We've all not been eaten by wild animals. Let's go for a little walk and then I'll show you the house when we get back. A little updated house tour. I guess that brings me to my move to Sweden. A year after I decided I needed a change, I set foot on Swedish soil. <laughs> and clearly it wasn't the five years I thought I needed. So my plan was to find something to renovate, find something cheap, because that's all I could afford. 
going to another country I couldn't get any mortgage anymore so I just had my savings but making this decision gave me such a sense of freedom even though I'm very much used to doing things on my own and I don't think that there's many things you can't do on your own I still thought that something this big would really be so much easier shared with another person or at least a driving license <laughs> which I did try I bought the book I wanted to take lessons but then more lockdowns happened and um, it just wasn't possible and I kept thinking should I wait for another year and then I figured why wait why wait for something to magically fall into place in the future let's just do it now it really only took a couple of months for me to decide to just go for it and that decision was really freeing I've been thinking about doing other creative things beyond interior design because my work is very much studio based and we work in a team on creative ideas and working remotely was just something that didn't exist but because of all the lockdowns there are a few more opportunities to help out remotely that's basically what I've been doing since being here and as you can imagine, this is also how I got my experience doing drawings, doing drawing packs, because that is my job, doing detailed design packs for, you know, plans, joinery, furniture. But renovating my own house, wow, this is... <laughs> something completely different and i realize that somebody who has no design experience whatsoever but who has done anything on their own house has more experience renovating than i do even though technically i work in construction you know i've been on building sites i've been around builders and told them what to do but <laughs> it's it's such an entirely different Thing. One of the reasons being is that everything I design is completely bespoke. And what I do here is absolutely not bespoke. I buy the things that I can buy in a hardware store and I need to make everything according to those sizes. So I realized that all the detailed design drawings that I used to make are just complete rubbish <laughs> when, when it comes to building things on a budget. But it also makes it such an invaluable experience and it's just so interesting to learn. And in a way I'm starting from scratch. Another thing that's completely new is using tools. I have never used tools before. I, I bought a drill once because I needed to put up a picture frame and um, I completely ruined that wall like that was a disaster that's the only time I tried to <laughs> use a tool so everything I've done so far I've learned from Google and YouTube. All the tools that I'm using. I read the instruction manual. <laughs> I watch other people on YouTube doing similar things and they have no experience but they manage to do it because they just go for it. I realize that the most important thing when you start a renovation project like this is to let go of perfection. I'm on a budget, I don't have all the tools and once you let go of that idea of perfection that's striving towards perfection, you just do it and then you've made a thing and as time goes by you learn how to do things as well and then the next time you can do it better and there's always a cheap solution as well. I really spent all my money on just buying this property so I don't really have much left. I haven't really done any freelancing work recently. I bought a whole bunch of timber before winter so I'm still working on those projects that I can make with those but I, I do 
kind of need to make a little bit more money. But despite that, you, you can do a lot on a limited budget. You just have to get a little bit more creative at times. And also, you know, a large renovation like this obviously seems a little bit overwhelming, but in the end, they're all separate small projects, so you can just take it step by step. And truly, anybody can do this. Like, you don't even need to be handy to do this thing. You don't have to feel like you have to be handy. You literally just Google. It's just, they're all just skills. And anybody can pick up these skills. So, I think my biggest personal advantage is not having design experience, but it's actually having lived outside so much and having gone on all of these long hikes. These summer houses in Sweden, which are generally the, the cheapest ones you can buy, are not the most comfortable and they often don't have proper toilets, plumbing, electricity, heat. And having lived in a tent for so long and spending so much time outside, not being able to hide from the elements has given me an advantage doing this build over winter and just dealing with being uncomfortable. I used to spend day after day walking, not knowing what the weather was going to be like, where I was going to end up. It's kind of the same doing this renovation. <laughs> I have to be flexible. I have to adjust as things happen. It's certainly not the convenience I had living in London. But then there's so much beauty in these small things, in these small moments cycling into town rather than taking a car which is so much faster and efficient. I see all of these landscapes and I'm really in them, I'm really part of them. I do my groceries once a week or once every two weeks. I was completely ready during winter to walk. It's a 12 kilometer cycle ride into town. There is actually a bus about halfway through, um, but it doesn't go very often. I got myself a sled and the sled is ready to be used, but I haven't needed it. This winter has been very warm. Honestly, it's been a little bit disappointing because I was I was ready to go for this and I actually wanted that adventure. The one thing that is more tricky is getting building materials to the house. But shipping costs are very high, especially when they need to use the crane to get it to your house. So I just have to be very organized. You know, despite that, it's very doable. And I love being here on my own. I think I was surrounded by so many people in London that I've just seen enough people for the next coming years. <laughs> and I can be a happy hermit. And if I do want to see people again, then I can, you know, change my situation. Everything changes anyways. And I love change, actually. You know, I've done many different things in my life and I like... I like following what feels right. So I came here to explore this new life and grow vegetables, be closer to nature. I didn't really have any dreams of having a homestead or being off grid, but now that I've been here for a little while, I do realize that I wouldn't mind something a little bit more extreme. I definitely love the snow and I would love to be somewhere that has a little bit more of it. I'm also realizing that 
Having a little bit more land to grow crops would be really nice. Owning a little bit of forest, obviously all of that costs more money. But it's definitely something that, you know, runs in the back of my mind. Also doing these renovations is making me realise that building from scratch is, in a way, so much easier than renovating a place. And I wasn't actually interested in building my own house before I came here. But having experienced these renovations so far, I am starting to be a little bit more interested in building my own little cabins. But I, I truly don't know what I'll do in the coming years. I'm definitely going to be here and renovating this place and living in it. Swedish taxes and social securities are quite high for freelancers. I guess worst case, if Sweden turns out to be too expensive, I can always sell this place, buy a ruin in Portugal, walk down there <laughs> and set up my tent in it. These plans though, you know, having a little bit more land or building my own cabin are very much future ideas and I have no idea if and when I might do anything like that. For now, I'm just planning on really enjoying being here and going through this renovation process. Actually, Portugal was my plan B. Yeah, when I came here, I obviously wasn't quite sure whether I was going to find anything. And I thought if I didn't find anything in Sweden, I would go to Portugal and try my luck there. My plan C was Slovenia. Mind you, I've never really spent any time in these countries, so yeah, I'm just going with it. But my plans for this house are also continuously changing. <laughs> Obviously, depending on budget and the things that I find and just experiencing how difficult a renovation is, especially structurally, I really have kind of simplified everything that I wanted to do. So. Let me give you an updated house tour and I'll kind of run you through my plans here. Oh yeah. Entryway. Let's try this again. Behind this door I live, but there's an armchair hiding behind <laughs> the door so I can't go inside. Oh! This is the reality of renovating. Wow. Let's jump again. Okay, this is the future living room and nothing has changed. It has just got worse. This is why I have a fireplace, which might at some point maybe work, but maybe not. And basically this is where I do a lot of wood cutting. <laughs> but yeah, it's obviously not in use. My plans for this space have actually changed a little bit. Originally, this was just going to be a living room and I was going to turn upstairs into a bedroom, but structurally, I don't know whether that is too much work. So for now, I want to make sure that the living room is also going to be a bedroom. But my idea is to have essentially built-in bench seating along both of those walls. And I was thinking of then actually adding shallow wardrobes on this elevation and making the benches a little bit deeper so that they can be turned into beds as well. So beyond this was another room. And this is where I took out the interior wall to make a bigger kitchen. I am making a little toilet here. I'm not going to show you this too much because that's next week's video. So 
So I build a new room, a tiny toilet area, and everything here is wood. I'm just covering the floor right now because I'm always using that door to go outside. So it's pretty messy. So this first area is my lobby. Toilet here. So originally my idea was to change the orientation of the staircase upstairs and put the stairs here, but I've decided to leave that job for now. I'm going to turn this into a cupboard and there will be a cupboard that I can easily take out. So if I do want to change the staircase and I have that opportunity. Down here I've got lots of bins, but that's going to be built-in cupboards. And then a kitchen will be like an L shape, running all the way from here to there. This right now is completely freestanding, it hasn't been fixed yet. And this is why I do my cooking. This has one of those amazing Swedish stoves, which if I can get the fireplace and the chimney to be approved or to be fixed as well, because it needs fixing, then I can use that, which would be amazing. This kitchen that I built, I did really fast, just in like a few days before my parents left, so I don't have any footage of it. But obviously there's a lot more of the kitchen that needs to be done. All of this is going to be wood. To be honest, the entire house is going to be wood. But this is, this is the beginning and this is the space that I've been working on. And this is where I live. It's not very exciting. I got this cute little armchair recently. And I have a little bed. <laughs> I have a bed. I have a chair. I have a working space. This is the radiator that I've been using. I used to have a cheaper one, but this is just an electrical radiator. It's a thousand watts and it keeps this room warm. And I made these cute shelves, but that's actually coming in another video as well because <laughs> I was getting creative and that's it that's a huge mess over there and this is where I've got lots of food so the mice wouldn't eat it during winter I have all of my plants this is life right now so my plans for this space include a big big shelf up here and then I want the kitchen counter in a way to continue in this room so we have a huge desk area and that will turn into bunkette seating on this side. But I've been focusing mostly on this kitchen because this is where all of the renovations, the bigger works has been done because of the leak in the roof and everything and building the toilets. But it's all so unfinished so yeah, this updated house tour possibly isn't very interesting, but this is what it is. I didn't, it doesn't look like much. <laughs> Actually, before I go, I'll answer one last question. Quite a few people are curious whether, whether I'm going to get a pet at some point. And now I have to say, I don't really agree with domesticated animals. I think it's a little bit sad because we've taken these like wild animals and gone oh you're cute let me put you inside and now they've lost their purpose i don't really know how i feel about them <laughs> i'm probably the only person who feels like this but i do have one favorite animal and if my life wasn't so ever-changing i might have quite a few of them running around when i was traveling in japan i actually went to an island that was just filled with this one particular animal and this is the one time in my life that I spent time trying to create a little video. This is probably the perfect time to share it with you so yeah. If I had a pet it would be this. Mm -hmm.